Coming up on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. A century old Mercedes with the steering wheel on the wrong side and no driver's side door. And it would have something to do with the future family. This looks cool, and it probably helps to cool, but... Occasionally a bug will come in. <laughs> <laughs> you get a visitor. You get a visitor. And with some cars, this could be a problem. First thing I said, there's no radiator in it. But in this car, it's by design. Plus... Everything is just perfect, and inside, clean, scale-free, rust-free, no more corrosion, no more anything. The restoration of the last Hemi continues. Hey, what's with that speedometer? One of the high-tech features of 1960. <laughs> A mirror. Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte, starts right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. I'm Jeff Phelps, and we are back at the Patterson Fruit Farm for a great car show. It is the Antique Automobile Club of America, Northern Ohio region's annual car show. Joe, we absolutely love your Nash Ambassador. I like the story behind it almost as much as I like the car. Where'd you find this thing? In Kentucky. My son bought a little farm there, and this was in the tobacco barn. And he wanted to get it out of the barn, and the professor that left it there said he didn't want it. They put it out in the pasture. So I got it from the pasture, a rust bucket, in 1984. A car out of a pasture that was a rust bucket. That's about it. Well, Joe, it's not a rust bucket anymore. How did it go from rust bucket to this absolute beauty? Well, in 18 years, my wife helped me a little with money. We finally got it to look like it does now. 18 years. 18 years. Bought it in 84 and drove it the first time in 18 years. Drove it the first time in 18 years. Yeah. So you had an 18 year project that you didn't even have the pleasure of getting behind the wheel and driving it down the road in. <laughs> You're a patient man, Joe. Well, I had a lot of time moving it about. I had a lot of miles on it before we drove it. Taking the frame one place to send blast, fenders every different places, motors someplace. So I had a lot of miles on it, but not from the steering wheel. <laughs> How do you start that process? From rust bucket in a field, convertible top, I'm guessing wasn't there, to what it is now, Joe? My wife and I thought we'd like to have an old car. And since my son had this farm, and the car was built the year I finished high school, we thought that's a good car. She thought new tires, little air, new battery, maybe we'd have fun with it. Never happened. So the big thing was getting her okay. What was the toughest part of restoring this car, Joe? The rear end of the car was rusted out completely. And so we ended up cutting it off and I found a car in North Carolina that was a coupe. They only made a thousand convertibles this year. So after 18 years and getting it on the road in what, 2002, I guess that would be. So you've had it on the road 10 years. How much fun is it? Is, is it what your wife expected or is she having even more fun than that? Oh, I have a lot of fun with it. Not as much, I mean, she doesn't have as much fun. And at first she didn't want to ride in it. Not unless you have seat belts and directional signals, which did not have. After we got seat belts and directional signals, then she wanted me to keep the top up, she'd ride. <laughs> but uh, we both enjoy it. Well, it was a nice compromise. You had something more in mind. She was looking for a little fun. As it turns out, you end up with a beautiful 1948 Nash. Well, thank you very much. Bob, when I think of Syracuse, New York, I think of Jim Brown. I think of Syracuse University. I don't think of automobiles. But your car, a Franklin, made in Syracuse, New York. That's right. They're made in New York. Sir, How long have you had this Franklin? I had it about five years. Well, it wasn't in too good a shape. It was basically just maybe a little better than the parts car. A lot of parts missing on it. You and know, where'd, you, where'd you find it? Actually, I seen it in Carlisle. I was looking at it. I didn't even know. First thing I said, there's no radiator in it. I wasn't sure about a Franklin <laughs> myself either. And we was looking at it, and it didn't have a radiator, and we found out it was air cold. Now, Bob, I must tell you, you're an ambitious man if you saw a Franklin that was nothing better than a parts car and thought, yep, I can turn it into this. And you did this pretty much all on your own? Right, pretty much all on my own. I do, I've done a couple cars and I've done a 31 Lincoln, which kind of looks similar to this. And I just knew how it was gonna look and I just brought it home and tore the rest of it apart all the way and started from scratch. I just 
liked the way it looked. I didn't even know much about Franklin's then. I know a lot more now but because I joined the Franklin Club, but back then it kind of, I liked the early 30s, the big cars, and that's what I was looking for. What have you learned about Franklin since you've owned this? Well, I learned that they're a lot better than I thought they were once I got them. <laughs> <laughs> they run good. They, like I say, it's air-cooled, doesn't have a radiator. You don't air -cooled, need no water. Supercharged, right? Air-cooled, supercharged. It's air-cooled, supercharged. It's 100 horsepower. Like I say, the headlights, the horns, all this stuff on the front was missing. Tail lights, and it's hard to find this stuff, but I run into a guy up in New York, which had quite a few parts. And how long did the project take, Bob? Probably took me about three years, but a lot of it's looking for parts and waiting, trying to find stuff. Now, when we took a look at the car, I had to ask you, what is that at the accelerator? Well, the accelerator is just so you're not jerking. If you back then, the roads were rough, everything was, and you're constantly hitting bumps, and they got that uh, piece on there with accelerators that you put your foot on. The accelerator kind of looks like an old it. spoon. Yeah, it's a little spoon, and you just kind of turn your hill to the left of them, and it just push on it a little bit and kind of keeps you from going back and forth on it. And if you have to put the accelerator on the floor in your Franklin, that doesn't mean very much because it goes about an inch. <laughs> That's about it. You just push it. Seems like it isn't really any different than the other ones, though, but you got that to keep it from, I know that's what it's for, from keeping from bouncing and jerking it. But it works pretty good. Well, Bob, I must ask you, when you saw this at Carlisle, and it wasn't looking very good, it was looking like a parts car, and even though you've done other cars and obviously have some real skill, did you ever picture this? I didn't think this was going to look that good when I did it, but it came out pretty good. Yeah, we'd say. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Look under the hood of a 100-year-old car, and who knows what you'll find. It's called a T-head engine because the combustion chamber is like a T. It's next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Sally, Tina, Betsy, you've developed quite a bond with your classic car. Let the consignment professionals at RK Motors Charlotte make the selling process as painless as possible. Through precision marketing and large customer base, we all but guarantee a sale at maximum value, and we don't get paid until your car sells. We've sold over 1,500 classic cars here at RK Motors Charlotte, and now we'd like to get to know Betsy, at least for a little while. Visit rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Skip, it's a 1928 Rio Wolverine. Correct, yeah. And Rio, named for Ransom E. Olds, Correct. who formed Oldsmobile. Right, right. How long have you had this car? Uh, a couple years now. Uh, got it off a friend of mine, and uh, I'm caretaking it now until, until my son gets it or I'm done with it and, and uh, maintaining it. So you were aware of the car for a long time? Yeah, I used to help him work on it, and uh, he was uh, retired and uh, didn't want to climb around under it anymore. And uh, like you said, he, was, uh, he had his fun, enjoyed it, and said he wanted to move on and not, you know, not, not, not work on it anymore. What do you like about this car? Obviously, yeah. it's, it's a unique name. You don't yeah. see REOs all over the place, and, and it's a very interesting design as well. Yeah, it, you know, it's, it's fun to drive. It's easy to drive. It's got hydraulic brakes. It's the first year for hydraulic drum brakes, and um, it, it goes right down the road, 40, 45, no problem. It's not a freeway car. Uh, it's all original, and, uh, but it's great going out for ice cream, and uh, we really like it. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, it's real nice. There's room in the back. You take, yeah, there's a lot of room. There's a lot of room. You know, you could take a couple out and have fun. Now tell me, I see the windshield. I see it kicked open at the bottom. Yeah. It, on one hand, I think, wow, great air ventilation. Yep. On the other, I think, is that good? Yeah. Is, is that good? Yeah, it is good. You know, it, it uh, changes the reflection, you know. You don't get the reflection, but it lets air in. And you can, you know, you don't need air conditioning, you know. And, it, and it, these things get hot. But, uh, you know, occasionally a bug will come in. <laughs> <laughs> you get a visitor. You get a visitor. Uh, and then we got the foot vent. It lets some air in on your feet. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's not bad. It's nice. It's air nice conditioning little, before air conditioning. Air conditioning, yep. Skip, the dash is pretty snazzy on this. I like it. Yeah, it's got that engraving of the Wolverine on there. Yep. And now, then a walnut steering wheel. That's, that's yeah. real nice. With Wolverine, uh, first of all, REO, not around very much. Wolverine. Yeah. 
How rare is this car? I I'm told that from the Wolverine, from the Rio Club, they, they told me there's uh, 12 that they know of, you know, that are the Wolverine. But that's just the ones that are registered with the club over the time. Um, there may be more, but there's not a lot. You know, there's more, there's more Rios out there, like the Flying Cloud, other, other styles of Rio, but there's not a lot of the... This year is the only year they made the four-door. This body style, they made it one year only. Wow. And uh, they, they made it 27 and 28 for the Wolverine model, and that's it. And then 28 was the only year for the four-door. The so, rare meter just went just flying went, yeah, sky that's it. high. <laughs> You're not going to see very many four-door Wolverines in 1928. It's been passed down from a friend of yours. You've acquired it. It's, yep. He kept it with you. Yep. What do you do with it now? What do you want to do? Uh, and enjoy it during the summer, store it during the winter, and uh, hand it down to my kids, you know, so they can enjoy it too. Scott, take a look at the hood ornament. I know what it is. If it didn't have a hood ornament and didn't say Mercedes across the front, I wouldn't be sure. But it's certainly beautiful, a 1911 Mercedes. That's right. And how did you acquire this? Well, I was invited to the Veteran Car Club of Great Britain's Silver Jubilee Rally in 1955, and I was picked up in this car by my host. And uh, it was quite difficult for him to drive. And before I left, the rally, I asked Mr. Aldays, I said, would you be interested in selling me this car? He thought about it and said he'd get back to me and then before we left Britain, uh, he agreed on a price of a thousand pounds, which in those days was $2,800. So you purchased this car in England in 1955. Right. And we've driven it about 65,000 miles since on various rallies. A Mercedes in 1911, was it as much of the car as a Mercedes is today? Yes, so. Um, one thing I'd like to straighten out, Jeff, is that Mercedes and Benz were two separate companies. So this is not a Mercedes-Benz, this is a Mercedes. And this car, English Coachwork, sold for about $13,000 in 1911 when Model T4s were selling for $350 in this country and a nice brick home on its lot was about $5,000. <laughs> it's a, an extremely reliable car that, as I say, it's very nice to drive, has a four-speed gearbox, the brakes are water-cooled, the steering is lubricated as you drive, and it's just a, a fun automobile. Climbs nicely, and, and we do a lot of things with it. Uh, last year, my wife insisted that I stopped cranking the car at 86 years of age. We had guests coming from England who liked to stop at every antique shop uh, and lunch. And so what, what we did at that time was uh, install. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. They didn't have that in 1911. No, Scott. it took about 150 pounds to pull up the uh, crank. Wow. So we don't do that anymore, <laughs> except to show off, because it does start very easily. Oh, that's very nice. Scott, what's under the hood here? It's a four-cylinder, seven-and-a-half-liter engine, cast in two cylinders of two blocks, and it has two spark plugs that fire simultaneously to give the car the power that it needs. This is the exhaust side. Water pump is there, the device that produces the electricity called a magneto, and then we'll go on the other side for the carburation. It's called a T-head engine because the combustion chamber is like a T. Inlet on one side, exhaust, and then the piston and the cylinder right in the middle. And on this side, Scott? Is the carburetor, steering as you see. It's all copper and brass. It's a right-hand drive, yes. just like it's supposed to be. There's no right-hand door. Well, for a very good reason. Uh, the gear shift levers and the handbrake levers, which are quite large, are on the right side of the driver. So getting in and out with a door would be, uh, uh, and it would have something to do with a future family. So. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for your time. You're welcome, my pleasure. Coming up next. This process is so 
dynamite for restoration. Um, and for preservation, not just restoration, but preservation. It's the restoration of the last Hemi on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Sally, Tina, Betsy, you've developed quite a bond with your classic car. Let the consignment professionals at RK Motors Charlotte make the selling process as painless as possible. Through precision marketing and large customer base, we all but guarantee a sale at maximum value, and we don't get paid until your car sells. We've sold over 1,500 classic cars here at RK Motors Charlotte, and now we'd like to get to know Betsy, at least for a little while. Visit rkmotorscharlotte.com. From start to finish, it's the restoration of the last Hemi. So Hemi came back from the dipper now. A um, couple surprises, nothing too major. The car was sent out to be redipped and cleared or cleaned a little farther than it was previous. The car was thrown through an acid dip this time also, which is a little more aggressive than an alkaline dip. So it went through an acid and an alkaline dip, um, both of which then make it clean enough to put the black e-coating on. The e-coating, they submerse it so it will get in every crack, crevice, uh, places where a conventional gun cannot get. This process leaves a very nice finish and, and again, something good to work on that's corrosive or anti-corrosive and gives me a better starting point. This is so clean, so perfect. The frame rails, um, you can see there's no swell left. Everything is just perfect and inside clean, scale free, rust free, no more corrosion, no more anything. It's, it's as best it's going to get from here. Now I'll be able to start sanding this all down. I'll be uh, working out all my dents. I'll be laying the polyester down, which is the base for starting all my blocking and my body work, uh, making this thing just arrow straight and perfect. Um, the, the cart and everything, the way it's set up, I'll be able to start putting panels back on, making all my gap adjustments, uh, kind of pre-fitting and pre adjusting everything because then it's going to go on a rotisserie so I can do the underside and get the underside perfect and again now with the dipping process done every spot inside those frame rails where you could have never gotten are, are completely coated now. There's no possible way on earth anybody could ever get a gun up in here in these areas to make it protected enough where I would be confident there's no corrosion ever again. This, I mean, as you can see, everything in here is just protected. Okay, here we have the deck lid. And again, this is just an example of where, you know, this process is so dynamite for restoration um, and for preservation, not just restoration, but preservation. You know, by going through the dipper, everything in the seams has gotten cleaned deep down in, all the little cracks, crevices, and inside. Now it has this nice hard black coating so even if when I'm shooting in my little cracks and trying to get through everything on this it, it doesn't matter because it has a corrosive protection on there but we still try and get everything in for visual purposes because you of course want to see nice white filled in holes but that's it's just a wonderful process and it really helps in the restoration field to be able to have this done. For more on the restoration of The Last Hemi, visit our website at thelasthemi.com. When it comes to restoring or servicing your classic or high performance car, expertise is the name of the game. And that's precisely what you'll find at RK Motors. You'll find our expertise in the attention to detail that can only be acquired through years of working on world-class builds. You'll also find our expertise in the RKM Performance Center, where we've assembled a team of highly qualified ASC certified mechanics. When expertise is the name of the game, trust the experts at RK Motors. Visit rkmotorscharlotte.com. 
Now back to the Patterson Fruit Farm on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Dan, we know a man is proud of his car when he puts it on his shirt. You got that one. And your 1960 <laughs> Electra 225 is on your shirt, and it is shirt worthy. It is fabulous. Thank you. How long have you had this car? 1984. Bought it in 1984. Well, it's striking in so many ways. The, the fins are great, the chrome is great. It's almost all glass right. all the way around the top, Dan. Uh, what features do you like the most about it? Well, actually, I like the front fender because of the bullet style, so on and so forth. The glass is a plus. It's like a, it's like a bubble top, only it's a four-door. Uh, the ride, naturally, the, the color, so on. I love the car. Now, you mentioned the bubble top. Bubble tops are more commonly found on two doors, right. correct? Right. And this is a four-door hard top bubble top. Is that a right. rare car? It's real, it's real rare. It's actually called a six-window Riviera sedan. It's a... Uh, it's the biggest of the Electra 225s for this year. Uh, the Electra 225 actually stands for 225 inches long. As far as I know, on the, uh, the Buick Club of America, there's 15 left in the United States registered with the Buick Club of America. It's four, a, four door hard top. Four door Riviera bu sedan. Top. Bubble top. Wow. Were, most of them were made with a flatter roof? They, they also had the flat top, what they called the flat top. This is a this is a sister to the Cadillac six-window sedan. There's only two of them made that year, and uh, it's, they're big cars. They're, they're luxury cars. Oh, they're big, all right. That's, yeah. that's for sure. What's under the hood? It's a Buick 401 nail head, 445 torque. It's a, it's, it's a normal nail head for that year. It's got a DynaFlow transmission with a torque tube. Uh, it's, uh, it rides like a boat. That's what they were made for. With the <laughs> torque tube, it's a, a torque tube is actually your drive shaft is in a pipe. It's one, one piece from the front to the back. There's no, there's no brake. I like the dashboard. The dashboard is actually a reflection that you're looking at down the bottom. See if this is a mirror. And, and Buick for 1959 and 60, they made it adjustable for the driver to be able to see from whatever position that he or she is driving the car. Actually, the, actually the speedometer is right down on, on the bottom. That's very cool. Yeah, that's one of the high-tech features of 1960. <laughs> A mirror. And I like the little circle on the connected to the gear shift to show if you're in park, reverse, what gear you're in. They call that the sight. It reminds you of a, of a rifle sight. Uh, 59 had it, 60 had it, 61 had it. I think they did away with it in 1961. Well, I, I love the look of the car. I, I love the striped chrome on the bottom. It's not an option, that's part of the 225, the distinctive extruded chrome. Well, Dan, it's a great looking car. Thank you. Our thanks to Bernie Goliath and everybody with the Antique Automobile Club of America, Northern Ohio region, for having us out today. They put on an absolutely great car show each and every year. I'm Jeff Phelps. We'll see you next time on Cruise In, presented by RK Motor Charlotte.